Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and a trainer. Now lately we've been talking an awful lot about the tools that are available for C++ with our continuous integration environments and CMake and CTest and our sanitizers provided by Clang and GCC. And now I want to talk about fuzzers for just a moment. So to introduce what a fuzzer is, I'm going to start with the example first, then bring it back to the tools, then show how to use them. So let's look at this example that we have right here. This simple program does a search for a new line and returns its location. You might think of this as a bit of code that you would find in the middle of a parsing infrastructure somewhere. And you're like, well, I know there has to be a new line at the end of this input, so I'm going to look for it. And you might immediately look at this code and say, that's just stupid. Why would you write code like that? But I promise you, if you have ever written a parser, you have written code like this somewhere. So let's go ahead and look at this example. The obvious problem is that this search through the string is unchecked for the length of the string. It's just going to search until it happens to find a new line. So let's see what happens if we compile this code. And I'm going to be using G++ 5 for this example. And there we go. A couple of quick changes here. And we compile and it does nothing of any consequence. Because in our example, we are passing it a string that has a new line in it. And I also want to point out quickly that yes, I am going back and forth between NVim and the command line, and I know there are alternatives for doing this, but I like to make it very clear exactly why we are doing certain things and what the command line options are that we're passing so that it is obvious to the viewers of the channel. So let's go ahead and recompile this and execute it. And it is, again, always working. But we know that we are not passing it a string that has a new line. And in some versions of this code, I've had it crash, say, every third time or something. And you really just don't know what it's going to do. So let's add some debugging. All right. So we're going to add our sanitizer. And we expect that we're going to immediately get a crash here because, well, it's accessing overflow data that doesn't exist in the string. So we know that this ASCII string hello is what it was accessing, and we see on line 6 that we're getting some sort of a crash in our execution here, and that is because of this. At some point, we're accessing a memory location that it knows is really a bad thing for us to be doing. That's great. That's what the sanitizers are there for. But the problem is, we might have a carefully crafted test set. We might have thousands of tests written that all have a new line somewhere in them, and this code just always does what we expect it to do at uh, some point in the program. So how do we go about testing a program that can take user input? And that's where fuzzers come into play. So a fuzzer and there are really two that I have spent time with. There's the American Fuzzy Lop, which is an excellent, excellent tool. And it works by instrumenting your code with some LLVM instrumentation. Kind of requires, I think, that you compile with Clang, but I could be wrong. Uh, I think it works best with that. And it looks for new paths through your code with the instrumentation that it's put in there. So it generates inputs using genetic algorithms, and it breeds inputs, and it takes the test corpus if you already have one, generates new things, and it can do amazing things. Uh, from what I understand, some fuzzers have done things like recreate the uh, GIF header um, format or whatever. They don't work as great for programming languages, but everything that I've used them for is for ChaiScript, which is a programming language, so uh, I've had great success with it. And then there's libfuzzer, which is from the LLVM team. And it 
So with American Fuzzy Lop, it's possible to execute any binary that accepts an input file, and it is a separate binary that is running and it is passing input files into your binary. But it takes slightly more setup to get it running, and the libfuzzer basically just expects you to add this LLVM fuzzer test one input string here, this uh, symbol, and then it is going to execute against that symbol. So for the case of our find new line code that is clearly not working very well, we're going to add in this code from the Clang example. So it's going to add a uh, main for us. So we need to pass in our data string basically into our find new line function here. And we are going to do that by doing a cast of this uint8 star data into a const car star. Left with the question of how do we actually use this. With libfuzzer, we are supposed to link against the libfuzzer library, which would make sense. But in the latest versions of Clang, we have libfuzzer having been elevated to the level of sanitizer we can actually say we want to sanitize with both the fuzzer and the address sanitizer. So with a couple of quick corrections here, we're not going to be able to use a static cast. And now we can run the program and we instantly get a crash. And it becomes a little obvious as to why we instantly got a crash if we look at the output that it generated for us. And so we can see here it generated this crash file, which is an empty string. And all we had to do in our example, because it was so incredibly simple, is pass an empty string in and we we're going to get a crash. So we need to do some sanity checking here. And we can do that by simply passing in the size of the data that has been passed to us. and checking against the size, and we can do something probably smarter than this. This is going to return the size of the string from our find new line, so if it never found the string. But we can recompile, and we can see where it is generating all kinds of inputs for us, and how quickly it is able to do it, which is probably actually very quickly. Um, yeah, it's already got 209 million tests run. And it is also using instrumentation inside the binary that it generated for us for basically seeking out new code paths. This code is extremely simple. I don't know how far it's going to go, but let's see what it uh it, it didn't actually show us the files that it generated for us. And if we wanted it to do that, then we need to tell it what the corpus directory is that we want it to actually output to. And that is simply done by passing the name of the directory that contains the test input files that we want it to use. So it'll start from files that are in that folder, and it'll pick up and it'll create new ones. So let's give it a quick check. And we can see the input files that it has generated, which are essentially a bunch of random characters. But if you have real test cases, it can automatically merge them and breed them and do interesting things to them. So this, again, is a tool I highly recommend using if you've got any code that relies on user input. And you can also give it options like maximum total time that it is allowed to run and maximum inputs that it is allowed to generate. And it can do, uh, so you could make this as part of your general continuous integration environment. So just have it run for two minutes on every check-in with your current test cases and see if it finds any new crashes. And make sure that you have your address sanitizer at least enabled when you run this. And then you can get some great crash reports if you have your continuous integration environment set up for that. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.